folks, we have got to talk about the remarkable improvement we're seeing from Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin. Let's not forget the man's heart stopped. And today he tweeted. After collapsing Monday night, team doctors delivered CPR for several minutes and rushed Hamlin to the hospital. Doctors say that DeMar Hamlin's neurological function is fully intact and he is breathing on his own. As for that tweet, Hamlin said, quote, putting love into the world comes back three times as much. Thankful for everyone who has reached out and prayed. <sighs> Remarkable. Today, NFL players were back on the field for the first time since Hamlin collapsed. There is another part of this story, though. On Monday, while medical personnel acted quickly to save DeMar Hamlin's life, the NFL took more than an hour to officially cancel the game. I said it was an obvious error from a communications and PR standpoint, but I also think that it raises new questions. Questions I think about, like the league's commitment to players' health and their safety. So joining us now to discuss is a doctor, Dr. Myron Roll. He is a former NFL player for the Tennessee Titans and Pittsburgh Steelers. He is now a six-year resident at Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital. I am clapping for you, Dr. Roll, because I just think your, your story in and of itself is remarkable. I, I want to start our conversation talking about DeMar Hamlin's progress this week. What are you watching for in these statements we're getting from the doctors and the team? And can you just weigh in on how absolutely remarkable it really is? Well, thank you for having me. It is absolutely remarkable, the progress he's making, the fact that he is now extubated, breathing on his own without any machine assistance, the fact that he's neurologically intact, able to squeeze hands, wiggle toes, move his eyes, extraocular movements are okay, able to communicate effectively as well. Uh, these are all very positive signs, and I think it's a testament to, one, his protoplasm, the fact that he's an elite athlete, was in shape and a healthy person going into this injury, but also to the fact of the quick activation of all the emergency medical providers who were on the field at that night when the Bills and Bengals played, getting CPR to him right away, getting him defibrillated, getting oxygen support, then transport him quickly uh, through the ambulance to uh, University of Cincinnati uh, Medical Center. They all worked well together to help him have a fighting chance. They absolutely, they, they literally saved his life. Uh, you know, Jerry Brewer of the Washington Post, he wrote that what happened to Hamlin is, quote, a warning to balance the obsession with appropriate concern for the human risk involved. The game is terrible at fostering such compassion, frankly. What is your perspective on this? How can the league better foster this compassion um, that he wrote about in that piece? Well, one, I think you were absolutely correct with the league taking a long time to cancel the game. You know, initially the reports were they were going to give the players five minutes to recover themselves and regroup and come back and play on the football field. Absolutely no way when you have a, a teammate, a brother, a friend, someone who you've invested time with, worked out with, went to training camp with on the field fighting for their life. You see these guys crying and completely distraught, in terror, traumatized by what happened. You want them to go back on that field and play? Absolutely absurd. So I think that was an error in messaging. So the NFL can be more clear and concise with valuing players, their human component of who they are, more so than the fact that they are commodities and they can market well and they make money for these leagues and uh, these TV stations that support leagues. Uh, it's a messaging and a PR issue for them, and they need to get it right because players are putting their life on the line, essentially, uh, to play the sport that we've enjoyed since we were children. It literally, and what unfolded that Monday night unfolded among in front of millions of people. It was it was truly re-traumatizing to watch the broadcast over and over again for that hour. Uh, there's another piece of this too, Doctor, and I, I think there's a piece about the money, particularly how NFL players get paid, because there are folks out there that think pro football players are all millionaires and they'll be millionaires forever. But Demar Hamlin, he is not on a guaranteed contract. I, I think he's still on his rookie deal. So, what do you think the people should know about? the NFL pay structure and players who get injured in their first few years in the league? Well, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, when you play such a violent sport and your contracts aren't guaranteed, uh, if you're not active every game, every 16 or six, 17 weeks of the season, you're not making what you're billed to make either. So there is a lot of wiggle room in the contract negotiation. The NFL PA and the NFL uh, really haven't come to grips with guaranteeing contracts for these young men who have a long life to live. Uh, you know, when I finished playing, all of my money went to medical school so that I could become a neurosurgeon one day. But, you know, who's to say what these guys can do after they're done playing? 75% of players become bankrupt after they're done playing. And if DeMar cannot play anymore, you know, he has to have some cushion or something to help provide a life for him and his family going forward because he literally 
was put into a very, very risky situation on the football field under the NFL's uh, jurisdiction. We are all continuing to pray for DeMar Hamlin's health, and I am grateful for you, Dr. Myron Roll, and your time today. Thank you very much, sir, and good luck in those classes.